six generation fighters. Sure, we can talk about that if you want. I'll call yeah. it. I have so okay. many questions. So many questions. Yeah, we won't be able to answer any of them. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> just just okay. speculate wildly. <laughs> We'll speculate. Well, we'll speculate a bit. There, there's a few things you can say. First of all, uh, just to start, there's no definition of a sixth generation fighter. Additionally, the the definition, the actual term of a fifth generation fighter was a made up marketing term by Lockheed Martin, nice. and then everyone started using it. And then we had to define it because they used it so much. Uh, so we'll start there. And then we were, we went backwards and said, well, if that's a fifth generation, like, how did you get to that? Here's a fourth generation. Here's a third. Here's a second. All right. So what, what differentiates a sixth generation fighter from a fifth generation fighter? I think the three things you can probably hang your hat on is, uh, they don't have tails. And the reason I don't have tails is they're, I would say that every sixth gen fighter concept that's, that's out there is tailless because it's, it's looking to, uh, maximize a wide band spectrum management, not just a narrow, it's, it's not just stealth in a narrow aspect, narrow, narrow frequency. So I think that's probably one thing. Um, the other stuff is the stuff you won't be able to see, which is uh, open systems architectures, to be able to plug and play different things into the aircraft um, and software updates that are, that are easier than what they are now. And then uh, the last one is uh, digital twins. So you'll have, you'll be able to iterate on designs, um, in a you know computer environment, uh, and then your sim is a physics-based sim that's kind of based on that, and so you you have a a you know cradle-to-grave model that's living and evolving with the aircraft, and each aircraft has its, has its own individual model. So when you go to like depot and phase, it's, you have like a digital model of how that airplane is is growing and evolving, and you know the maintenance issues and things over time, and that that leads to things like predictive maintenance and uh, dynamic phase and what you know the end result all that nerdy stuff is that you're going to get a better a better performing uh aircraft with higher availability rates with you know mission systems that are more reliable where this that's what yeah i, I mean so in gad right next generation air dominance mm -hmm. fighter that's i mean yep. what we're talking about where is that like where are we in that timeline uh, well, I don't want to tell you about that. Um, some of these things I was heavily involved in some, uh, I, I can, I can look up on Wikipedia, but what I can say, uh, so, so here, here, here what's Wikipedia go. say? Yeah. How many, <laughs> this is actually a better question. Uh, the world is changing. We said the world is rapidly changing. It is rapidly changing. How many six generation fighter programs do you guys think are actually in play right now in the world? Mm. Four, six. Four. I know there's two in Europe, right? There's like a European Union one and then a British one. And us. yeah, so yeah, that, that's pretty close. So they're actually you're all so, somewhat correct. So there, uh, there's five right now. There used to be six, which is actually right, kind right. of recent news, which is why we're like, hey, we can talk about the bro chat. So the uh, the first two are U.S. programs. There's the NGAD, Next Generation Air Dominance. That's the Air Force program. There's NJAD, that's a soft G, same acronym, just a soft G, and that's the Navy. So, of course, they had to name it the same the same thing, which is a hard G versus soft G. Uh, go figure. Uh, then there's FCAS, which is the Future Combat Air System. That is, that is one of Europe's programs. That's France, Germany, and Spain. And the news on that is they actually just signed the contract this last week to move on to the next phase of development. That thing isn't going to be fielded to 2040, though. That's a long ways off. But it does have some very ambitious, uh, very public, actually, man-on-man uh, -man teaming initiatives. Airbus, believe it or not, of all people, is pretty far ahead. They're one of the lead uh, primes on that. And they, have, they, have, they just did a really sweet man-on-man -man teaming demo like last week. Actually, it was this week. I think it's going to be in the Roach tomorrow as one of the, the links. Uh, nice. So they took, a, they took a, an A400 mike which is a like a c-130 type aircraft and they had a uh, uh airbus has a, a target drone business they're called the do uh dt-25s and they actually air deployed them out the back of the the cargo ramp while it was flying and then they had a learjet actually take control of them was and so one learjet was controlling five of these uh flying on, around and operating autonomously so that was kind of cool well there you go look at that yeah boom yeah, there it is. 
a lot of German, a lot of German speaking there. So yeah, yeah, yeah out, out the go. back it goes. Boom. Out the back it Boom. goes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty wild. Yeah, fancy. Yeah. All right. So when I look, so when I look at that picture, and I don't know how far we can get down this uh, road. Uh, How's the maneuverability? Obviously, I look at it and I, I feel like that looks like a fighter. Like, are we building these with the assumption that they need to be able to turn, they need to be able to be a femme? Or are we building these uh, under the idea that, hey, we're not going to have to do that because the technological advances? Uh, you talking about the one that's on the screen right now? Yeah, this the yeah this one, whatever that one's supposed to be. Yeah, so so this is the other news. That is China's sixth development, uh, sixth generation. Oh, man. Fighter. <laughs> yeah, how about that? So that's a that's a clear mock up that they uh, they showed on an air show last month. It's been in the in the in the Chinese white papers and R and D stuff for the past about two years. Uh, so I would expect to surprise. It'll probably surprise everyone when it starts flying. Probably ten years ahead of what you know Intel says because that's been the that's been the, the track record lately <laughs> with Chinese tech development is they're they're way faster than anyone ever thinks. So uh, yeah, some of those are. are way more maneuverable than you would think um yeah so let's leave it at that they might not look that maneuverable but they're they're probably a little more maneuverable than you think uh and unlike a like a b21 or b2 which are uh subsonic only designs you know those those actually can go supersonic so there's a speed and a maneuverability kind of baked into it without a tail which makes it a sixth generation fighter look at that yeah <laughs> how about yeah. that the uh the other one that's in in Europe is, um, well, was so. There's a program called Tempest, which was the UK, Italy, and Sweden, um, and that was to replace the Typhoon on a 2035 timeline. And then there's another program. Put a pin in that for a second. There's another program in Japan. It was called the it's Mitsub the Mitsubishi FX. It doesn't have a name. It's basically supposed to replace their F2s, which is like your uh, your Viper cousin out there with the canopy bow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what happened was uh, the UK, Italy and Sweden um, reached, they were doing some collaboration with Japan already for some um, co-developing engines for their separate programs and a few other things. And finally like, Hey, why don't we just like build one fighter together? And so this past, uh, this past like 10 days or so, uh, all the countries have agreed to merge those two next gen fighter programs into a new one. And this new program is now called the GCAP, the Global Combat Air Program. So that's all your 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 next generation fighter stuff for the, the, the week. There's a lot of stuff going on. 